Hi, I'm Kobe Chantel. And I'm Russell Harris. And we're getting married June 20th, 2020. Are you excited? We got six months. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Very so excited. I think I'm a little bit more excited than him. I'm just excited to get it over with. But we will get started and give you a little bit of context on how we met. Um, it has been almost, what, three years since about, we've known each other? About three. Sometimes I'll tell people we've been married, we've been together for five, but hey, you know. He can't count. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you remember how we met? Well, I think we have two totally different stories hey, of me, how we met. I can tell my ver actually, you tell your version first. We met through social media. Um, I believe I seen him outside of social media before. That may have been how we, how the friend request may have spurred, or you don't recall? I've never seen her in person prior to the Facebook like, but go ahead. Russell has selective memory, so he doesn't always remember everything that, um, that happens. So whatever. Um, but yes, we technically met through social media. Um, he slid in my DMs. Um, I think he knew that my dad was a pastor because he sent me a worship song. Um, he sent me a worship song like this song goes hard. This is such a worship song. You know, have you ever heard it before? But what was your response though? Oh goodness, it was a good worship song. Exactly. I will say that, it was a but. Great and you still listen to it to this day, right? I do. All right, good. I do. It is, it's an amazing song. Um, it's called Abba by Leon Timbo. Um, it's an amazing song, Great but song. I'm sure that he used that. That was his strategy to, to try to get me to respond if he sent me a worship song, seeing that I was a pastor's daughter. I hmm. didn't know she was a pastor's daughter, let's be clear. Um, I had no clue. I knew that she had a spiritual component to it because everything she posted on her social... So first of all, let me rewind. I, I stalked her social media page and I, I liked some of her photos and saw some of her posts. So most of her posts were, you know, Bible verses and things like that, uh, which, which is, uh, you want, which it's, it's, it's actually similar to what I do. Like I, uh, sometimes I post Bible verses, so... I knew we had that in common. So, you know me, uh, I sent out the young uh, Leon Timbo praise and worship song. I was actually listening to it that morning and uh, she liked it. I uh, also liked some of my photos. So from there, I slid her a DM, sent her my number, told her we should uh, have a conversation and talk. And uh, she didn't respond right away. I thought she was, she was playing with me. Uh, I was. You never respond right away. So you was playing? This is the first time I'm hearing you. So you was playing with me. <laughs> You're not supposed to respond immediately. I sent the message in the morning. I didn't get a response until the evening. I was in meetings all day. Anyway, she responded, sent me the young text message, and uh, yeah, we, we later met up and went out to dinner, and yeah. Anything you want to add? Nope, you have it your way. <laughs> How did I know Kobe was the one? It's interesting. So I was, uh, you know, doing my research on it. And we had conversations every single night uh, before we met in person. And most guys who uh, get engaged, most guys who, you know, find their life partner, like they say that you know right away. Sometimes that's true and sometimes it isn't. In this case, when she walked through those doors, I remember being like, yes, Lord. Like, thank you, Jesus. And I kind of I kind of uh, ran away from it because I wasn't ready to be, um, you know, what she needed me to be in terms of uh, a man. You know, I was, a, I was young and dumb, uh, but... I realized I had to grow up, so I uh, I grew up, matured. I actually I uh, went away uh, to the military. Actually, uh, something I always wanted to do, but I actually went away to the military too, so that I can be a better man um, and be the man that you know she needed me to be. Um, it taught me a lot. 
Um, so yeah, I knew, I knew right away. Like I remember when she crossed that threshold of that door, being like, "Thank you, Lord." And what <laughs> door was this? I was a I was a principal at the time. Uh, she met me at my school after school uh, before we went out on our first date. How did I know Russell was the one? Um, I am very close with my parents. Like my parents are my rock. They're my foundation. Um, I tell my parents almost everything, not everything, but almost everything. And um, I remember coming home. I was, little, I was living with my parents at the time. I remember coming home and I was just telling my parents um, about this guy. They was like, you've been spending an awful lot of time out lately. You know, where you been at? And so I was telling them like, you know, I met this guy. Um, he lives in Detroit. I don't know about him. I kind of like him. I can't really decide right now, but you know, he's a he's an all right kind of guy, I guess. Um, and I was telling my dad a little bit about him, and I was like, you know, I really want you to meet him. And I think for me, I move better when I have my dad's approval, if you will. Like when my dad kind of gives me the yeah, this is a this is a fairly decent guy. You know, I I move better. And so I was still in limbo because I didn't know, like, you know, is this someone that I should be pursuing or is this someone that, you know, or excuse me, is this one someone that I should allow to pursue me? Um, or is this someone that I need to just pump the brakes on? Like I didn't know. And so I had been praying, asking God, like, you know, give me clear direction. And um I really, I, I think in my heart, I knew that I liked him. I just needed some confirmation. So my dad and him, well, actually my mom and my dad met Russell and we all went to Panera Bread and we had a great conversation. I remember, I think it was later that night or the next night, my dad was like, a dad. He was like, eh, he good, you know, he all right. He got a good head on his shoulders, you know, whatever. And so a couple of weeks after that, um, I think he had been coming um, around my family a little bit more. And I had went to go visit my friend, um, Jaleesa, in Dallas um, one weekend. And I had been telling Russell, you know, I really want you to get more involved in church. Like, I want you to, you know, show up, like, you know, because Russell had been going to church, but it wasn't really that often. Um, and so... <laughs> I just wanted him to just be more involved. Like I, I really do desire to have a husband that, you know, seeks God, that, you know, is prayerful. And so um, I had told him like, you know, I really want you to get involved. And I think for me, what put the cherry on the top where I was 100% convinced that I really, really liked him, that I wanted to um, pursue or allow him to pursue me more and, you know, be more intentional about the relationship was when I went to Dallas and he went to my church and he joined my church when I was in Dallas. Um, my dad said he came to the altar um, and he he said that he wanted to join and I wasn't there. He didn't tell me he was coming. Um, to me, that spoke volumes. Um, and I... I was just so appreciative that, you know, I had someone in my life who was very intentional, who did something without me asking them to do it. Um, he did it on his own free will, and I could tell that he was interested. Yeah, I was, so just to be clear, at the point when I joined the church, uh, to me in my head, uh, we was in it, you know, so although she probably wasn't there yet, in my head, uh, we were in it for the long run. So uh, I didn't join for her uh, because her dad is just a phenomenal pastor. Uh, and I really uh, found my home at, at the church. So that's why I joined. But it worked out for the, for the good of <laughs> both of us. Let's talk, some, uh, let's talk a little bit about maybe one of our toughest times being in a relationship. Yes. Trials and tribulations. Um. I'll say the toughest time for me was when Russell decided that he wanted to pursue the military. Um, it came as a total surprise, a shock to me. Like we had never talked about it. This was something that was very um, near and dear to his heart, something he's always wanted to do. But, you know, in us learning more about each other and talking, he never really shared that um, with me. And so um, 
he told me he was interested in pursuing the military. Um, he said it's something he always wanted to do. His dad served. Um, and so I'm like, what? You want to do what? I just was taken back. Like, we, we fought and argued and could not get on the same page. I was not supportive at all. Um, I was really bitter. Like, I was nasty towards him. I was short. I didn't want anything to do with him. Um, there were moments where I felt like, you know, I don't think he's for me. Um, I told my, my parents, like, you know, he is just not for me. Like, he's being selfish. He wants to go to the military. He's 30. He's graduated from college. He's, um, he's received his master's degree. I mean, he's studied and got certificates at other universities. Like, what? Like, he has a career. Like, why the military? Like, the military is for people that are 18. Like, I was just not, I just didn't get it. I was not, I was not there. And so um, that was the toughest, toughest time for us. It was a really, really low season for us. Um, we had a lot of issues during that season. Like, we clashed a lot. Um, and I didn't know if, it, if, you know, he was for me. But God made a way <laughs> and showed me that, um, this was my forever. <laughs> so let me be clear. I think uh, for me specifically, it was definitely the time that I was away, but it wasn't for the same reasons. Uh, you know, when I left for the military, like I said earlier, I left for multiple reasons, but one of the reasons is, you know, I just wanted to be a better man. And I know that the military provides you with a certain amount of elite discipline um, that you can't find you know, any place else. So I left and she wasn't happy. And while I was away, you know, they take it, they take away all communication to the outside public. So um, I couldn't talk to her. And the only way we communicated was through uh, writing letters. And that was tough because the first three weeks I was gone, I didn't get a letter from her. <laughs> and all of my other friends were getting letters. So I thought- Dear John letters? They were getting Dear John letters from their significant others telling them that they no longer wanted to be in a relationship. So surely I thought I was next <laughs> because she didn't send me anything. And I remember getting that first letter. And I don't know why my letters got held up, but they did. Uh, she had wrote the letter long before she sent it, of course. I got my letter in and she was upset with me like, hey, you're not getting my letters. What's going on? Uh, after that, I wrote it every day, uh, but that period of time, just being away from each other for uh, six months was tough, so. Why, so why did you join? Why, what made you? Yeah, I, I mean, it was something that I always wanted to do. My dad was in the military. Um, you know, he raised my brothers and I uh, <laughs> with that, mil that military background, you know, I remember having to stand at attention, you know, things like that. So it was always an interest of mine um, and I also wanted to, like I said earlier, uh, just learn more about discipline, learn more about uh, myself in terms of pushing the envelope. So I just up and joined it. She's right, I didn't tell her anything, I just did it. While I was away, actually before I left, I took her mom and her grandmother to go look at wedding rings and we fell in love with this diamond. And uh, so the entire time I was away, I was just saving money, saving money, saving money. Actually, I remember, you know, having a conversation with her, like, look, we're not going to get married until 2022, but I need your help. I want you to go put a down payment on uh, a ring. The jeweler is not going to show you the ring, so don't ask him, uh, but just go ahead and take him some money. So she actually, while I was away, uh, <laughs> took a payment to the jeweler uh, to pay for all wedding ring. Uh, of course, and I got my ring, my finger size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't sure. I remember I wasn't sure of her size. I thought it was a seven, but I wasn't clear. So she went and got his size. And she had access to my bank account, so she wrote a check, signed my, forged my signature uh, from my from my uh, account, and uh, put a put a down payment down on the ring. So fast forward, uh, I returned home April twenty sixth from the military. The twenty seventh, I went to go pick up the wedding ring. And I hit it until the May 4th. Um, while I was away, she thought that she was helping me plan for my return home celebration. 
Um, but while I was away, I was writing her people letters. I was, you know, calling some of her people, asking them to participate, telling them that, of course, I was going to propose and to keep it a secret. Um, so, yeah, she helped invite people. She had her family help set up. And uh, she got there. She was clueless. Um, I was nervous. <laughs> that nervous, should have been the nervous. first inclination because Russell did not eat. Um, and Ru if you know Russell, Russell no. eats I a lot. Day. All day, every day. Several meals a day. And so he did not eat that day. And I, he just wasn't, but he didn't seem different. He just wasn't eating. He was just up. He was talking to people. Granted, he had a lot of friends and family in town. So, you know, he was just celebrating and talking to everyone. But I should have just knew something because he wasn't eating. While everybody else was at the table eating, he up walking around, talking to people. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, he's just celebrating. You know, everyone's here for him. So I should have knew something, though. Yeah. Long story short. Uh, while everyone else was eating, I finally was like, look, I can't hold this in any longer. I'm just going to do it now. Um, we were able to invite uh, one of my good friends. Actually, I had Kobe invite uh, our good friend, Jerm, who came and captured everything on camera. Some of the dopest photos, as y'all see from our website. Uh, but yeah, our families and friends were there. I was able to, uh, while they were eating, kind of explain uh, what she meant to me. Uh, in a way that now as I look back at the video it took 27 minutes <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know dropped down on the knee and she said yeah so well I said you lied to me first that's what I said you didn't say I lied to you but that that thing right there that's what we was waiting for that thing right there so we're getting married June 20th 2020 um Russell and I are both summer babies um Russell was born June 24th. I was born July 26th. And so um, my mom actually helped us choose that date. Um, I told her I wanted a summer wedding. I just didn't know when I wanted it to be, but I knew I wanted it in summer. Um, August is pretty busy. Um, you know, it was either June, July, or August. My birthday is in July, and my mom actually just was like, hey, what about 6 2020? And so we were like, Oh, that's not a bad date. It had a nice ring to it. Yeah, it had a nice ring to it. We thought it was pretty cool. And turns out, um, Russell sent me the DM on 62017. So isn't that something? It'll be exactly um, three years to the date um, when we officially tie the knot. Six months. It's coming fast. It <laughs> is. We're excited, though. We're looking forward to it. Uh, we will be getting married at my dad's church. Our ceremony is open, um, so you are certainly more than welcome to come and celebrate with us at the ceremony. It is an open ceremony. Yep, and then we're having our reception in uh, Grand Blanc.